first, we're going to focus in on the problem. What is the impact of the global uh, food crisis on nutrition and development? Secondly, we're going to focus in on proposed solutions and their adequacy. And thirdly, we're going to focus in on implementation and how those solutions will move forward with a special focus on the role of coordination amongst actors in different sectors. We're really talking about the dramatic increase uh, over the last uh, six months, but really over the last few years of uh, really every agricultural commodity. So we're seeing in, in some cases like milk and rice a tripling uh, of the price of these uh, commodities. This will improve somewhat over the next 18 months, but that for the next five to 10 years, we're gonna see fairly high uh, prices of commodities and it's very much going to be, it should be seen as a structural change. I think clearly we're already seeing uh, uh, impacts in terms of, of the MDGs as, as, uh, and predictions as you're saying around, uh, around hunger, but also I think there's a strong feeling that uh, around child and maternal mortality we, we are also going to see some setbacks. I think that we need to have a sense of priority. It is true that we are receiving some very important contributions. But these contributions are to protect what we were already doing because of increased prices. What we would like to do is to use, in terms of opportunity, our persons in power to buy locally. I think that we can also contribute to generate employment, livelihood, and at the same time, stabilize the country. Yeah. Nutrition is not only health today. Nutrition is also stability. And most of the process we have made in terms of eradicating poverty or reduction of hunger and malnutrition, MDG goals are at risk. So it is not just a health and nutritional issue. It's also a social and economic and political issue. And the opportunities are there. Food aid internationally has to be stepped up. But we also need to ensure that there is adequate purchasing power for the poor. And this cannot be a one-off aid. So you need schemes like rural employment guarantee schemes and food for work and other programs which are actually income generating and supporting. We need a global trust fund that can be created by agencies such as the World Bank and large foundations, which will ensure that during periods of macroeconomic instability, national social sector spending on health and nutrition in low and middle income countries is protected. The issue is not only food. I mean, that is the entire thing of global warming and energy demands, and increasing energy demands, and also water issue. And there's a lot of science also I have to contribute. Now, a lot of loss occurred during food production in soybean and wheat. On average, 30% are lost. So if we can capture this one third of loss on average, could make a major contribution. And that's where the really science and technology could play in. There needs to be a very clear understanding that money isn't going to solve this problem. The, the, a core issue here is getting the right policy framework in the countries which have the problem. And we need to realize that the policy capacity in many of these countries is desperately weak. And they need assistance in getting that policy framed. And that's where I think there's questions as which institution at international level is most uh, capable of doing that and how would you go about doing it? Clearly the process has got to be fixed and the ground rules for collaboration do need to be established which returns to the question of trust. Because when you've got a relationship based on trust you can maximize the use of the resources and capabilities. Uh, you can get to the issues of vision and action and you can do so without spending weeks and months and years on theoretical debates about uh, the goods or bads and what people don't want. I think the question of need needs to drive who should be at the table. Who has the capability to deliver on addressing the problems and the solutions?